Hello, every nation family, and welcome once again to our online platform. We are celebrating the Passover starting this weekend on the Friday, and it is such an amazing time to be able to think back about the most amazing event that happened on the planet, and that was the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, I just wanted to share with us from the Word of God on this day about the importance of the cross. The cross is the gospel to the weak and the gospel to the foolish. And it also addresses the powerful and the wise. And today, I really felt in my heart that in the midst of where we are today as, as nations, as a society, so many people looking around for wisdom, so many people looking around for power, for ability. Many people are in a place where they are helpless, where they, they, their positions of power have been tested, and they are for the first time in a place where they, they feel like the, even the wisdom of the wise is confounded and is foolish and is no longer even good enough to meet the different challenges that we have today. Even as a community, we have experienced amazing uh, challenges over the past couple of months, just with the pandemic around the world, the changes that the economy is facing, and just family changes, everyday challenges that people are facing. And this is the good news, that Jesus has come into the, into the world, sent by God as a manifestation of the love of God. I wanna share with us from the scriptures, as we're looking around for wisdom, as we're looking around for power, the word of God speaks to us very clearly about the power of the cross. Today is Friday, and uh, on, on the Friday um, uh, context, we have to address uh, the crucifixion of Jesus. On the Sunday, we see him coming out of the grave, and we will on, on Sunday share a little bit more about that, but first, we're going to the Word of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 to 25. It says this, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom or eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So first and foremost, there is power in the cross of Christ. And it's something that is almost so paradoxical that someone being crucified in a position of weakness is the very symbol of power. Verse 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. And many times we look around and even in our churches today, we see many messages coming through. Great advice on this, great advice on that. But the word of God is stating this, this day that the cross is the power of God. That many times we come to, to, to hear wise words. Many times we come to hear eloquent speak, speakers. But what we need is more than that. What we need is the power of God. Verse 19 says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise the, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, it says, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand a sign and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles or Greeks, but to those whom God has called both Jews and Gentiles, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. You might be thinking, okay, every year there's a massive celebration during this month that is called Easter. 
and the whole world is aware that this is Easter Friday and then Easter Monday and it's the Easter weekend and we've got the Easter bunny and all the eggs that, that are going around and the cross of Jesus Christ almost seems to take a background. It is something that even the churches tend to do religiously. But the cross of Jesus Christ is not only centered around the Passover weekend or the quote unquote Easter weekend. The cross of Jesus Christ is to be at the center of every single day in our lives. Every single moment of our lives is defined in its wisdom and in its power because of the cross of Jesus Christ. What was happening at the cross that really made such a massive change in our lives and in the life of the entire human race. Jesus Christ was not only a man. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh coming into the earth and he was on the cross paying the price for the atonement that for the atonement of the sins of the world. And this was necessary because if there was any other way to reconcile man back to God, there would be that way. But there was no other way, and Jesus' death and sacrificial suffering was the only way for the reconciliation of mankind back to God. On the cross, Jesus was paying the price with his own life in order to open the way to eternal life. And many times we look at the cross at it as a symbol of, of Christianity, but we don't realize that that is the very place where the exchange took place. When we see the cross, we should not only see a man suffering, rejected by God, under wrath, under shame, under pain, but we should see ourselves on that same cross as well. Because when Jesus was crucified, we were crucified together with him. When he was buried, we were buried together with him. When he ascended, we ascended together with him. And when he was seated in heavenly places, we were seated together with him. So the cross is the, uh, is the ultimate triumph, is the ultimate victory that signifies that Jesus has overcome evil in our lives and in this world. Sin separated man from God. And we know that the, 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 the whole world is under a curse because of the sin of Adam. But Jesus came as a son of God to pay the price and to reconcile us back to himself. And what happened on the cross is that Jesus shed his blood. The word of God says that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. Many times we ask for forgiveness. You hear people that don't even know God asking God to forgive them. The asking of forgiveness does not take away sins. What takes away sins is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist pointed to Jesus as he was arriving and he said, There, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And today, as we are looking at the cross, Many of us look at that and we think to ourselves, the cross is such a scandalous picture. It is a man that is naked on the cross and that is bleeding and that is in a place where a criminal would be. And yet that is the wisdom of God. The word of God says that if the powers and the rulers of this world knew, knew what God was going to accomplish through the cross of Jesus Christ, they would never, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. They would actually have protected Jesus from being crucified and being killed by anyone. If they knew the great exchange, the great powerful uh, transaction that was going to take place on the cross. And the cross of Jesus Christ was both the wisdom of God and it was also the power of God. Jesus was not only dying there as a result of his own sins, but the, the Bible says that God placed on him the, the, the sins of the whole world. He is the propitiation for the sins, not only of the Christians, but the sins of the whole world were placed on him. The sicknesses of the whole world were placed upon him. The curses of the world were placed upon him. That is the power that was being exerted on the cross. And in the same way, 
as that was being laid on him, the wrath of God was being poured upon Jesus Christ until he said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? And so we as believers begin to see beyond just the ugly picture that is painted of a man naked on the cross. But we begin to see the transaction and the salvation that is being brought about through the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. And many are going around saying, I want power. I want wisdom in this world. I've got, I, I want a way out. I want a solutions to my life. I want something that will help me where I am. And the answer is the cross. And you might say, no, that, that, that's just the beginning. The cross is just the beginning. There's more in Christianity. There are deeper things. Oh, yes. The deeper things are all about the riches and the power of God that was exerted in Christ when he died on the cross and when he was raised from the dead. And I want to encourage us today, we're going to take some communion. As we take communion, the word of God says, we remember what Christ has done. But more than that, we proclaim the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because as we proclaim the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, we partake in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in our own efforts. Our faith is not in our own holiness. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it makes a difference. Today, you might be a believer for a long time. I want to encourage you, let's not become familiar with the cross. Let's not become complacent and thinking that, yes, I know about the cross. There are riches and graces and powers that are to be tapped out of this revelation that the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ was the wisdom of God and it was the power of God. Wherever you are, do you need a miracle? Do you need a healing in your life? Are you trusting God for something supernatural? The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is the way. I'm reminded of a testimony of a woman that was sick with a terminal disease. And she uh, basically was told by the doctor to go home because she had to put her things in order and prepare to die. And someone gave her a Bible and said, just read through the book of Isaiah. That was their recommendation. She started reading in the book of Isaiah 53 that speaks about the suffering servant and how he has borne our griefs and our sorrows. And the word of God says that Jesus Christ is portrayed as crucified very clearly before the Galatians. And she began to see Jesus in her spirit, being crucified in her place, taking the punishment for her sins, carrying her diseases. And she was supernaturally healed in an instant because of that revelation. Many times we look elsewhere for solutions. We look to the government. We look to our family. We look even to our pastor. And yet we have not yet looked at the cross of Jesus Christ. And today, as we're reminded of Passover this weekend, let us elevate the cross of Jesus Christ. The word of God says in the book of John, in the same way that the serpent was raised up in the wilderness and Everyone that just looked at the serpent that Moses, the bronze serpent that Moses made, everyone that looked at the serpent was healed from the snake bites that were going in the camp. In the same way, I want to encourage you. There's, there's people today, you're in a crisis. I want to encourage you, look to Jesus. Look to the cross. That's where the wisdom of God is. Look to the cross. That's where the power of God is. Look to Jesus. He is not there on his own account. He is there on our behalf. He is there fulfilling the desire and the will of God. I want to encourage you to get some communion right now. We're going to take communion. The word of God says that on the day, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And whenever you do this, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. If you are sick in your body, if you're trusting the Lord for a miracle, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ already paid the price in order for that freedom to be released in your life. Let's partake of the bread.
Father, we thank you, Lord, that there is life in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it is real meat, real food, and everyone that needs nourishment today, Father, that the power and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit will be released right now as we partake of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the word of God says, then he took the cup and he said, this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. And so we have a new way that was opened through the cross. No longer through our own works are we justified, but we are washed clean because of the blood of the Lamb of God. And I want to encourage you, if your conscience is on your case, that you will repent today and that you will receive a clear conscience because of the sprinkling of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not the blood of animals. It's not the blood of bulls and goats. It's not the blood of a human being. It is the blood of the eternal Son of God. And by this blood, there is remission of sins for you and for me. There is eternal redemption for you and for me. Today, we are not eating Easter eggs. We are eating the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that has not only a sweet taste, but that it has the very life of God, the very life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's partake. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to pray for us today. I thank you, Lord, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened today. Open our eyes that we will perceive the Lord Jesus Christ as clearly crucified, as clearly crucified. Lord, that we will see that he was carrying our sorrows, that our iniquities and our sins were laid upon him and that the punishment was meted out on Jesus. Fully paid, fully paid, as he said, tetelestai, it is finished, it is fully paid, that none of us will any longer bear burdens and curses and sins because the Lord Jesus Christ has already made the way, he has already paid. Father, I pray for each one of us as we get this revelation, let miracles happen. Let healings take place, Lord. Let deliverance take place. Let freedom roll, Father God. And we thank you as we celebrate today, as we celebrate your Passover, Father God, that we will taste and see that the Lord is good and that we will experience the power, the power of the cross in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.